Well, uh, th this uh, organism is a, uh, a single cell organism uh, called tetrahymena. Um, it belongs to a group uh, of organisms called ciliates. Uh, and uh, they, they, uh, they live, tetrahymena lives in ponds uh, around here. Th these organisms, uh, tetrahymena is a very, uh, an excellent uh, uh, organism for doing research. It's, it's, very, uh, it's very hardy. Uh, it, it, it grows very fast uh, and uh, uh, very inexpensively, and it shares a lot of biology with uh, humans. One of the most uh, interesting things about tetrahymena is that the organism has uh, seven sexes. And uh, when, when a progeny cell arises, uh, the, the, the cell uh, de determines what uh, sex is going to be in a random way out of the other seven sexes. This has been known for about 50 years, uh, but we have been unable to investigate this phenomenon in the past because uh, we had not identified the, uh, uh, the genes that, that are involved in, 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 uh, in many type, uh, in, in determining the, the sex. What we have found with, with, with the study that we're reporting now is that uh, uh, the process uh, that uh, every cell uh, is only uh, the, 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 ma the mating type of a cell is specified by a pair of adjacent genes. What we found was remarkable is that there are six pairs of these genes, one representing each mating type. And okay, so that, that might not be quite so remarkable. You might have expected something like that. But when you look at these gene pairs in detail, what you see is that there are only two complete genes out of this entire set. The ones at each end have the complete gene for um, the first gene, the A gene, and the, the last gene, the B gene. So that when the cell um, has sex, you know, it's much like us. So two cells have sex, and they use their germline to make a new germline and, and macronucleus, somatic nucleus, for, for their progeny cells. So what's very exciting about this work is what it enables for future work. Um, what it does is it lays the groundwork for us to uh, know how to track these changes. And so as Eileen and Ed have mentioned, um, you go from having multiple copies of this gene to only having one. Somehow the other copies are deleted and you only have one. Um, and in some sense, this seems to be a programmed process. But um, you don't get even distributions of which main type comes out, and the parental main types also seem to have no effect on which main type comes out. Um, and so we're interested in trying to uncover how that mechanism works um, through mathematical modeling and, and experimentation, but without knowing the location of the genes and the sequence of the genes, um, all that work would be somewhat hopeless because uh, you couldn't test any of your hypotheses. So this, allows us to start exploring this mechanism of trying to figure out exactly what it is that's happening um, that results in the deletion of certain genes and keeping of other genes. This is the, the kind of research uh, which uh, opens doors for additional knowledge and which maybe five years or 50 years from now may find application often unexpected to medicine or to everyday life.